Hello everybody, and on today's elevator parts project, I'm going to be showing you how you can wire up Otis touch fixtures so that they light up when you press them, or I guess in this case, you touch them. If you've never seen these fixtures before in person, they're really neat. Obviously these are touch buttons, so just touching them activates them. And the technology behind them is actually quite interesting as they use a vacuum tube. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to wire an intermediate and terminal call station. And I'll also show you a little bit about a touch car panel. So this project requires the use of 120 volts AC. Generally, most of my projects, I try to use low voltage power supplies. However, for this one, we have to use 120. So if you don't know the dangers or have never worked with 120 volts before, I definitely do not recommend this project. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about how the tubes work or proper wiring or anything, but the 120 volts AC is a quick and easy way to get these tubes working without having to have any special power supplies or build any complex circuits. 120 volts AC is not the ideal voltage to use, however, it will work to get these things running. So back to the actual fixture, we'll take a closer look at each of the parts, starting with the button. They could either be round or square. And something important to note about these is the arrow itself is actually metal. And that kind of has an important role with the whole 120 volts portion. On the back side, we have this little spring, which is what actually touches the tube. And then we have the little metal housing. So the actual construction of the fixtures is not too in depth. It's pretty simple actually. The magic happens within these touch tubes. And that brings us to the tube base. So in this first instance, we're gonna look at a intermediate call station. So again, I'm not going into huge detail about how this exactly works, but we'll take a closer look at some of the components. You'll notice here on both sides, they're actually pretty even, each having a capacitor and two resistors. And then you'll notice the five terminals there. And those terminals are where we will hook our wires to. So if you look at the tube base, you'll notice there are labels by each of the pins. There's three, four, five, and C. The C is the cathode, three and five are the anode, and four is the grid. Now we won't be using the grid in this project, but I'll show you what the grid does later. As for the actual wiring, you want to place the live wire on the C pin. Now the C pins are separate, so you'll need to connect them together with another wire. And then you'll place your neutral on the three or five pin, and it doesn't matter which one because they are connected together with a wire. So here is my wiring and the black wire, which here in the US is the live, is connected to my C pins. And you'll see I have a wire connecting those two Cs together. And then I have the neutral, which is white, connected to pin number five. And ground just sits off to the side because if you touch the ground to the tubes, it will actually light them up because that's how they're activated. But if I plug my tubes in and give them a touch, you see they work. So now let's look at a single tube base. This would be a terminal call button. And it's pretty much the same idea as the intermediate, except you'll notice you're missing a couple pins. You're missing one of the C pins and you're missing pin five. But that's to be expected because we only have one tube. And it's the same idea. You have your C for cathode, three for anode, and four for grid. So just like the intermediate button, you're going to place the live on the C pin and the neutral on the three pin, and the four is not used. And you'll see this works nicely. So lastly, we have a car panel. And these are a bit different than the call buttons, and you can probably tell already we have a different layout on the bases. And this is where using the 120 volts AC kind of comes back to bite us in the butt, because this is not how these tubes are ideally meant to run. They're meant to run on 135 DC and 150 AC. You can still get them to light up just fine with the 120 volts, though they may be a little bit weird because they're ideally meant to run on DC, However, when you place your panel back on top, you will not be able to get these tubes to activate because 120 volts just is not enough to trigger them through the plate. So you might be wondering, why does 120 volts AC work on a call button but not a car panel? And that's because of that metal arrow I was talking about earlier. The metal is more conductive than the plastic, which allows the tubes to sense your touch on a lower trigger voltage. Here I have 120 volts AC running through these and you can see they're acting kind of weird. Some are staying on. And this is why it's not really good to use the 120 on the car panel because it just doesn't function the way you would want. So just to show you what happens with DC, I have this little converter board which will turn our 120 AC to 135 DC. So I added in my multimeter so you can see the output voltage from my board. And powering that up, I can start touching tubes and they light up and they stay lit. And that's how they are supposed to operate in DC. On AC, they turn off. 
So you may think at this point I could just put my plate back on and these buttons will work just as intended. However, because my trigger voltage, which is the 120 volts AC, isn't high enough, it still won't work. So going back to the grid that I mentioned earlier in this video, we can actually see that in use here on this panel. The grid allows us to crossfire the tubes, which means we can activate multiple tubes using one tube. Now this is something that would be useful if you had multiple call buttons in a bank of elevators, so both buttons would light up when you activate one. And because of the way that this panel is wired, I actually have to activate two tubes to get the same effect, but you can see all of them light up and it looks really cool. So if you wish to wire one of these for yourself, I have some more information about these over on my website. If you just head down to the description of this video, there will be a link to my page where you can see some more info about the car panel here and also the call button shown at the beginning of the video. So that's it for this wiring video. I hope you guys learned something from this and I hope it wasn't too complicated. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next project.